The following presentation was recorded at the NDS Public Conference in May 2022. Hello, everyone, and thank you very much for having me. Um, so my name is Brian, Brian Holt. Um, I, for the last four years, I've been leading the HD Maps department at Parkopedia. Uh, my role recently changed at the beginning of this year. Um, so I'm now the, the CTO, uh, but I still share uh, quite a lot of responsibility for product management for HD Maps, um, hence why I'm presenting this. Uh, so I'll tell you a little bit about Parkopedia um, and our history. Uh, so we were founded in 2007 when our uh, founder and CTO was looking for parking out in uh, San Diego and just couldn't find parking. And so uh, this, the company was spawned, Parkopedia, um, as a, initially with the, the objective of helping people to find parking. Um, but now, you know, we power parking services um, in millions of connected cars uh, around the world. Uh, we also have online presence and mobile as well. Um, and I'll talk more about the, the various services, uh, but just to give you a flavor of the coverage. Uh, so for our, uh, all of our parking products, uh, we operate you know, in, in nearly 90 countries around the world, 15,000 cities. Uh, we have an enormous database uh, with on-street and off-street locations, many, many attributes that we store, um, which we maintain as well, and uh, check in terms of quality and freshness, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so really, um, we, we serve the entire automotive industry. Um, it's, it's the tiered suppliers. Um, the TomToms, Hears, uh, Harmons, etc. Uh, but also we act as a tier one uh, to the OEMs, supplying our data through to you know, uh, all of these major OEMs um, and the mapping and navigation providers as well. Um, so if, if we think about our services, um, the, the way I think about it is we take the, the driver on a journey. So initially the first question is, where can I park? And we answer that question with our uh, vast amount of static data. Um, so this answers the question, where can I park? You know, and when I get there, tell me what are the restrictions? What are the hours? What are the height restrictions? Um, what, are the, uh, what are the costs, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And there are you know, many, many different attributes uh, that a, um, an OEM uh, and ultimately a customer would want to, to know. But that by itself isn't enough because knowing where you can park um, is only half of the story. What you also want to know is when I get there in 20 minutes or a half an hour, what is the probability that I will actually find a space? That makes it much more useful uh, because you really don't want to go you know, and search for parking somewhere where you're unlikely to find a space. And so we offer this dynamic data, predictive availability, using um, machine learning models that are trained um, and you know, do inference on, on vast amounts of floating car data and um, park in, park out data, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that brings us to the third uh, product that we offer, which is transactions. So now that you know where you can park and you're confident that you will find a space, um, now can you reserve uh, a spot or can you pay for parking? And so we do that through our transactions product. And then finally, we think about indoor mapping. So when you uh, drive towards that car park, <clears throat> you have a navigation experience on your head unit, uh, which is fantastic. But then you enter a large parking facility and you no longer have line of sight to satellites and you now lose your navigation experience. Your head unit goes dark. Um, and you drive around a large car park, you don't know where you're going, you don't know how to minimize your overall journey time, uh, all these sorts of things. And then when you return to your car, where did I even park my car? Uh, and this, you know, so these are come, so, uh, some of the use cases that come out of um, indoor navigation. Um, but we're also thinking about automated valet parking and specifically type one ADP, where the car is able to park itself. And so our maps are, um, are suitable to support uh, AVP as well. So why are we joining the NDS Association? Um, I think there's a few reasons. Um, you know, I, I want to say I agree with everything that Chris said. Uh, I felt like as he was presenting, um, it was, it, you know, it's all the things that I wanted to say uh, in terms of alignment with the NDS Association, um, 
But there are a few other specific things for us uh, that are quite valuable. So the first thing is right now to enable a high quality navigation and AVP experience for the end customers. I mean, right now, this doesn't exist. There is no ability to navigate inside of a car park um, uh, you know, using a map. No, you know, th this doesn't exist. Um, and so there is, there's quite a lot of work to be done uh, to get uh, the mapping service to the point, uh, you know, and the, the underlying standards to the point where uh, this is actually supported. Uh, and so we're contributing uh, through the AVP task force um, uh, led by the NDS Association. Um, and there are other questions, you know, okay, so we provide indoor maps. Uh, how do these indoor maps actually connect to the underlying base map? Um, and then finally, to collaborate with customers and partners as we now roll out uh, our maps in production. Uh, we have you know, hundreds and hundreds of these maps uh, across Europe. And now we're at the point where we're actually looking to, you know, to get this onto the head unit um, to enable the customers to have the experience that we envisage. So it's a pleasure to join the NDS Association. Thank you very much for having us. Um, and I really look forward to working with you guys uh, to enable the indoor navigation experience and automated valet parking. Thank you for watching. Visit our website for news on NDS at nds-association.org.